let us now talk about minor pieces. So we did establish the center, how to fight for it, put the pawns there, usually as many as possible, assuming you have time and no trouble with that. Now what do you do with your minor pieces? So I'm going to use again this position to illustrate a good way to develop your minor pieces. How do you know that your piece is well placed? Very often when you probably watch some videos or commentators, they say, oh, that's a good bishop. Oh, that's a good knight. That's a good rock. What exactly does it mean? For, for many players, that's more like an intuitive feeling. But I want, I really like to put numbers and logic into intuitive things so that I'll be able to explain it to my students and people who are willing to listen me talk about chess. So how do you know that your knight is well placed, for example? Knight is a very particular piece. It is very specific. It stands out from other pieces because the way it behaves in a weird way. Knight is well placed in the center of the board or very close to it. Knight is well placed in the center of the board or very close to it. I mean these squares. Okay, that is black side, so let us not go there yet. We'll get there later in the game. Knight is well placed at these squares and the reason is, well, geometry, I would say. Knight is not a very fast piece. The, the reason why knight is well placed in the center, because from a central square, let's say from d4, in one move it can jump to the queen side and attack there. In one move it can jump to the king side and attack there. Knight is not a very fast piece, so it is very important to keep it in the middle or very close to the middle of the board, so that it can join action happening at any part of the board. You shouldn't really bother about that with the bishop. The bishop can just stand in the starting position and could be fine in some openings. So knight is well placed in the center or at the squares adjacent to the center, to the center. So these squares, these squares are good for the knight, the middle of the board. Now what about the bishop? Let me give you this example. In general, a piece is well placed if it either attacks your opponent's pieces, pawns, knights, rooks, doesn't matter. If your piece is attacking your opponent's pieces, in most cases it is a good piece. It means it is putting pressure on your opponent's position. Also, especially with regard to minor pieces, minor piece is well placed if it attacks the central squares. In this case, I'm talking about the center. So a piece is well placed if it either attacks your opponent's pieces or attacks the center. Whether it supports it pawns, whether it attacks the pawns of your opponent that are placed in the center. So this is a general rule for the pieces. A piece is well placed if it is attacking the center or your opponent's pieces. I'll give you an example. For example, black plays this and this. In the one of previous videos, I said that putting the knight on d2 is not good. And well, the reason is it is not attacking the center well. For example, knight c3 is a very good move in this position because it is attacking the center. Knight on d2 is not good for two reasons. It is not very well attacking the center. It's not controlling the opponent's side of the center. It is also blocking the bishop. It violates the rule of developing your pieces as fast as possible. Well, not yet, but in a few moves, when you think about developing your bishop, let's say you go knight f3 later, you develop the bishop and you castle, you still have to develop your dark squared bishop and your knight is in the way, you would have to spend extra time, either moving the knight someplace or playing b3, bishop b2, which it is much faster to develop the knight first and then later develop the bishop, no obstacles there. That's why the best place for the knights in many openings are these two squares. They support the center well, they are not in the way of the bishops. 
In vast majority of cases, these are, these are the best places for white knight. Also for blacks, but white usually is one tempo ahead and can kick one of those knights away. I'll give you another example. Let's say black plays French defense and you go for exchange variation. Where would be a good place for your minor pieces? You have four minor pieces to develop. Where is a good place to put them? As you already know, knight goes to f3. That's a great place. It supports your pawn and attacks the central square. Let's say black develops knight here. Now, what do you do with the bishop? A bishop is well placed again like a knight either when it attacks the center or attacks some pieces. Bishop d3 is the best move in this position for white. You develop the bishop, it is controlling the central square and it is in the long run it is attacking a pawn on h7 so black should be careful maybe in the future that pawn could be in trouble. For example playing bishop e2 would already be a small inaccuracy. It is not attacking the center it is not attacking any of your opponent's pieces. That is called a passive place for your bishop. It is just standing there. It is not putting pressure on your opponent's position. So the best place for this bishop is bishop d3. Let's say black goes also bishop d6. And now you castle. So white castles as quickly as possible and let's say black's castles. Now let's talk about these two guys. What would be a good place for these pieces? Let's talk about the bishop first. Where do you put this bishop? Well, you cannot put it here. Okay, let me do it, do it this way. Let's black place the passive move bishop to e7. What do you do about this bishop? So white can put it here, 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 or maybe think about b, b3. Which one do you choose? Here, the two good moves for white here is bishop f4, very simply, it is attacking a central square and it is putting pressure on that pawn. Or you develop the bishop to g5, which is also a good place for a bishop. It is putting pressure on the knight. It is not aimed at the center, the center, but it is attacking the knight. That's a good place for a bishop. Going bishop d2 would not be a good idea. It is not aimed at the center. It is not attacking any pieces. Bishop e3 is a little bit passive. It is, well, technically it is aimed to, towards the center, protecting your central pawn. But that pawn for now doesn't need protection. It is better to place it further. It is not only attacking the center, but is attacking the pawn on c7. Maybe black will forget about that. And let's say black plays c6. So what do you do about this knight? Well, automatic move would be knight c3 here, and that's a decent move to play. The problem, however, is that it is not really putting pressure on this pawn. This pawn is well protected here. But if black didn't play c6, that would be a good move for the knight. That's a decent move. You control this center and maybe later, if black wants to play c5, you can attack that pawn in the center. So what do you do about your rook? Same logic. Rook is well placed when it is attacking the center or when it is attacking your opponent's pieces. You may have heard about the rule of open file. The best place for your rook is open file. In this case, let's say black plays some dubious move a6. Well, what do you do with this rook? Of course you put it here. That's an open file, check one. There's a bishop on e7, you're putting pressure, check two. And you're aimed at the center, check three. Perfect place for your rook. That rook actually doesn't have a good place to go. Usually you're just waiting for black to take your rook and then another rook attacks the open file. That is close to perfect development for white. As fast as possible, there is a pawn in the center, minor pieces, all of them are putting pressure on the center, rook is an open file, king is in safety. So again, to recap, minor pieces, attacks the center or any piece in general, attacks the center or attack your opponent's pieces. That's how you know you placed your pieces well. Let me give you another more common example, e4, e5. So again, if you follow the rules like technically without knowing the details, technically this is developing the knight. And black goes knight f6 and technically you develop the bishop. I developed my minor pieces, right? What do you want from me? 
Well, I have several issues with those two moves. First of all, knight on h3 is horrible. It is not attacking the center. It is uh, not attacking any pieces. That's a horrible place for the knight. Knight on the rim is grim. I think that's the saying. And it's also purely mathematical. On the edge of the board, the knight can hypothetically do only four moves. However, this guy on f6 can, well, not legally, but eventually, it can make eight moves. It's just twice as good, basically, uh, from logistics point of view. And I do have an issue with this bishop. It is aimed at the center, technically, it's protecting the important pawn. But it is not attacking your opponent, it would be much better placed here. And if white wants to complete the development after castle, this bishop, you need to push this pawn and the bishop is in the way. That's a horrible place for your pieces. So that's why knight f3 is the main move in the position. And black goes knight c6, developing the knight, protecting the pawn, for example. So what do you do with this guy now? I hope now the answer is quite obvious to you. Why they all play Italian or Rui Lopez. If bishop goes here, it's putting pressure here and towards the center. If you put the bishop on b5, technically it's not aimed at the center, but it's putting pressure on the knight and capture is always a headache for black in this position. Nobody is playing bishop d3 here for the reasons explained above. Or bishop e2. Technically that's developing, but that's too passive. That's too passive. It's not putting pressure on the center or any black's piece. So that is pretty much all you need to know about development of your minor pieces. Center or attack your opponent's pieces and as quickly as possible. Again, I'm working under the assumption that you can see that you cannot go there uh, so that you, that you would lose material. That's why I'm not even talking about captures, right? That's relatively obvious. So center, put a pawn there. Development. Develop your minor pieces to active places. What is an active place? Attack the center or attack any of your opponent's pieces. That qualifies as an active place for the pieces. It works in like 95% of cases, that definition. And the last thing we would discuss in the next video about castle.